Hello and welcome to The Print. This is Akanksha Mishra and you're watching Scientifics where I will be taking you through this week's top science news from across the world. Our first story today is by a group of researchers from Australia who use crystal formation on the Martian surface to determine how the environment on Mars evolved. What they found is that there were multiple layers of these crystal structures on Mars, indicating multiple time periods in the past where the planet was watery and therefore could have been habitable. The crystal structures the scientists talk about are commonly known. They're large deposits of calcium sulfate minerals in different locations on Mars. Scientists have theories that at one point, large craters in Mars used to be lakes of water that contained dissolved minerals, which then crystallized as the water evaporated when conditions changed. A new twist to this theory is that the Australian researchers found layers of crystals in the same locations in Mars buried deep underground. This meant that there were multiple such periods when Mars was watery, possibly habitable, until conditions changed. Does this mean that it could be habitable again? Well, who knows? But at least we are a step closer to finding out. We have long said that animals have feelings, but they express it differently than humans. The next story on Scientifics is an interesting anthropological study conducted by University College London researchers on the grieving process of primates and other mammals. It has long been known that when female monkeys lose their infants to death, they often carry their bodies around for months. While this could be a display of grief, we don't yet know exactly how monkeys express their grief and whether they wail, lose their appetite or show other signs of bereavement the way humans commonly do. By observing groups of monkeys who had lost their infants versus those who hadn't, the UCL scientists were able to determine that monkeys indeed do not express grief like humans do. While yes, bereaved mothers do rest less than normal, otherwise their grief upon losing their infants is categorized more as a protest stage of grief. So when one is separated from their child or their parents, there's an initial level of agitation and sadness that comes out of protest that one often goes through. In humans, when this separation continues in the case of say death, this agitation turns to despair. But in monkeys, what the scientists found is that grief often does not go beyond the one to two month stage of protest grief. The next story is by a University of Michigan scientists and explores a period in time 40,000 years ago when the Earth's magnetic field changed. This is called a geomagnetic excursion when the internal rotation of the Earth's core changes and it has happened around 180 times in the past in the Earth's history. The last time, the North Pole moved from its position and came to Europe, which was then inhabited by Neanderthals and the first Homo sapiens. When the Earth's magnetic poles change, one of the biggest impacts is that there is increased solar radiation at the poles, in this case over Europe. Do you know the two factors that scientists found that could have helped Homo sapiens survive this phenomena? Sunscreen and tailored clothes. That's right. Archaeologists have found evidence of needles and sewing in caves near Europe from 40,000 years ago. Not to mention an increased use of ochre, which is a natural dye that has iron oxide and silica and has sun protection properties. Well, next time someone refuses to wear sunscreen, you can remind them that this is a practice dating back 40,000 years ago in our species. Our final story today is a new study in the Environmental Science and Technology Letters Journal, which found how changing from diesel to electric trains in San Francisco reduced exposure to black carbon by 89%. This is a huge achievement, especially given that the reduction in black carbon mirrored that of other Californian cities that had air pollution regulations for over 30 years. In contrast, Changing trains took about a few weeks. While this was a US-specific study, the improvement in air quality led the authors to promote electric trains as a global solution, given that they are faster, more reliable, and obviously less polluting than the older diesel-powered locomotives. That's all we have for you today. Thank you for tuning into The Print.